that I oh, used. Oh, it wasn't a, it wasn't a good scene. It wasn't a good scene. I'm pretty sure the words that came out of his uh, thoughts were, uh, I hope the Canadian real estate show goes down in hell. But I, I mean, he didn't say that, but like I could feel it. You know? Well, look, if Twitter has anything to do with it, we just yeah. <laughs> might actually go that way. Yeah. I'm so disappointed. I'm so happy that you're not distracted with that Twitter nonsense anymore. It's such a delusional world of Thank you, TK. craziness. You're going to be, man, you're going to make like $3 million more this year because of that. All that time invested. See, in I knew I should have just called you right away and get right? like the little TK spin on things because I knew what. Yeah. But you know what? I actually, I do you want to know the truth? Sure. I had the conversation with you in my mind, TK. I you know knew. I said, what is TK going to say to me right now? Because yeah. I'm sure he's really busy and he doesn't have time for this nonsense <laughs> of I, right? And I, and, I, and I heard you say like, thank God, like you have that out of your life right now, right? Mm -hmm. And there's actually a few other people that said that, but I'll be honest with you, TK. I feel like I'm missing an arm right now. Yeah, I don't know what to do with myself. I'm like, how? What? What do I do with all this time I have? Find find more properties to to buy and. Uh, well, that's that's uh, that's what that's what's going on, TK. Do you remember the? Uh, do you remember the 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 nail in the coffin move that I was talking about with you? Yeah, that big move, that big fucking move. I was so excited about that. I want to. It's happening, baby. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I got everybody on board. I'm so excited. That's the move. That's the move. That's the ultimate move. I was so move. confident in you. I even told you, like, I would support you for that. That's how, I when know, I know I that Daryl's got a move, That's it's a move. move. It's that a move. He's not going to move, move forward man. unless the move is, like, there to move forward on. It's really true. And my partner even yeah. said to me, he goes, listen, like... I, I know you wouldn't tell me that this is the move if it wasn't the move. Like, yeah. fine, I'm I'm in. Let's go. Yeah. Let's And the rest go. of the pieces will just fall into place. You're going to have no choice now. They have to. They it's have fine. to. But look, the honest to God truth is all of them want to, except for this uh, problematic mm -hmm. piece. But, but they're, they're... that's a pretty good issue to have because if I'm dealing with two, if I'm dealing with three people and I got one person who really wants to, work with me and two people don't that's against the odds but if i have two people who want to work with me and only one person doesn't i'm looking much better much better you know much better but if you have six out of six willing to work with you mm -hmm. this is beyond miracle this is, this status this reminds me of like when we go into estate sales right so we go into the estate sale and the uh, brothers and sisters and their wives and their husbands and all and everybody's there the grandkids and everybody's got their own opinion everyone's got their own realtor Everyone's like this, that, and the other. And the one guy brings me in, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and uh, it's like, you're trying to convince a bunch of people who are like out to get you. They're trying to like prove everything you say wrong because they want their buddy, Jim, who sells three houses every sure. six years to be able to get this one listing because they're trying to help them out because they play hockey with them on Saturday nights. And and so you're you're just up against a fire, you know? And you, you just learn how to talk. Look, do what's best for you guys. I understand. I want you to quiz Jim just like you're quizzing me and ask him to show you all these things here and go. How for, well go, do you really know Jim anyway? Right? Of this all. And you slowly but surely grab each one of them and show them that your your boat is the is the most buoyant ship to cross the sea with. That's and they right. trust you in the end, you know? Yeah. Did you did you hear about Jim's last deal? Like, I don't know about no, that guy. You don't throw Jim under the bus. You just Not make under sure the that bus. You, just you kind show of beside clearly the boat. how you want to be critiqued and how uh jim should be as well too but hold on That's let's right. do a live call right now i've got an offer in the works oh let's go all right can we listen in Gonzalo? yeah i can hear you i can't my client is back on the 9th of august i'm gonna put those in the it's like a fucking peanuts cartoon. Uh, you listen says immediate closing, okay? Oh. Now you're telling me it has to be over the first. That's not too immediate. That's why I told my client the sooner the better, because the listen says immediate closing. Okay, we can close in two weeks, like I said. But the better deal is on August 1st. 
So I, I'm, I'm just trying to help you, Gonzalo. We can close August 10th, yeah, well, no problem. Well, then my suggestion would be uh, to be arranged, that's what you put there, to be arranged. So I don't know if the immediate doesn't help much, but anyhow, uh, I'll go with 10th of uh, August. Okay. Okay. All right. Looking forward Thank to you. it. I'm in a meeting for the next hour, but I'm available by text. Email but just email me the offer. You. At getleo.com, okay? I'll email it as soon as I have it all. Done, getleo.com, okay? baby. Here's a commercial. I need Here's at, a least, at least an hour, but I'll try and deal done, baby. Okay. Here we go. My client said type an offer and email me, okay? Oh, okay. Hold on. Another offer just came in, TK. All right. Another offer. Bye. Thanks, Gazelle. Bye. Do you need an offer now? Do you need a better offer? No, we already have another offer. That's the second offer. Do you need a better offer? I got a pen. Look at you, <laughs> TK. But shouldn't we do that, though? Right? Why yeah. not? We we Just said start it was fair game. Fake offers, two hundred grand. Fair game. Yeah, no, conditional look. on everything. And do it on on the air and see what happens. Yeah. I guess yeah. I have to edit that out. You're gonna make me edit that out. Why? I don't know. That was fucking cool. We yeah, should do we that have more to often. It just, it's cool. just a phone call. Yeah. Well, I don't know what he said half the time, so I'm gonna have to do have some to voiceovers. To the, how the how the how the wording was. That's great, TK. Thank you so much. Are we ready to uh, bring in on our guest? Bring him in. Do we want to talk about anything else? No, we're we're in. We'll just go. He's an he's a YouTuber. He's professional. This guy's ready to rock us. and roll. Yeah, I think my coffee. I think I like double dipped on the coffee pod because this thing tastes like <laughs> not coffee, like coffee ish milk. It's a big disappointment, TK. It's a yeah. big disappointment. Hey guys, how's it going? Zen, there he what's is. What's happening? Nah, he's putting afternoon. deals together. He's putting deals together. He's ten minutes late. He's writing offers. He's I'm just trying to be important, but realistically, it's just uh, construction season in Toronto. Construction season. That's the you know second season. Yeah, the only other season. Yeah, construction that's all good. Construction season in Toronto. No shit, eh? It's crazy. Where I, w I was downtown yesterday, and I can't even believe like how long it took me to get down there. I don't really go anywhere anymore. Um, but like. So you want to hear a crazy story, though, about traffic and yesterday? And so I'm on my way to this court thing, OK, which I was super excited about. Let me tell you. And I'm following the Google Maps and it tells me it takes me. I'm on Eglinton. It makes me make a right on Strather. And then there's like this brigade of police officers waiting there, like a wall of policemen. And they're busting everybody. And I'm like. I'm I'm so nervous because I'm already late and like I just got pulled over and I don't know what I did. And obviously there's a long list of things it could be. So I'm worried about this guy pulling me over and he pulls me over. He goes, sir, you're not supposed to turn down this street at this time of day. And I'm like, what? Like, really? I'm just following Google Maps, man. Why don't why don't why didn't somebody just like press a button and say there's like construction on this street? Why are you setting up a sting here of police officers? This is this is what and, happens in traffic. Well, but this is traffic is like they, they just throw cops and orange things all over the city. Nobody knows what's going on. And even Google Maps is fucking up the traffic right now. Like it's supposed to help traffic, but it's sending people down the wrong streets. I don't even think the traffic guys, when they're hired by construction, are given tickets. Like I don't think that's part of their deal when they're like um, they call them uh, paid duties. I'm pretty sure like you're just there to watch the construction site. You know, you might still think that you're going to give out tickets, but I don't think that they're meant to be giving out tickets. So next time that happens there, I'll just wave to the guy and just say, thank you very much and just carry on. But like for guys like you and you. Zen, like who are making deals and running around all day, like just give us some traffic flow that works, guys. <laughs> like, come on. This is like I, supposed to be a big city here. Fuck. No, I, I agree. That's why I was late today, too. They didn't disclose that the on ramp on the 401 is closed. And oh. when you go straight through on Leslie, you can't U turn anymore. And you also can't go through where the old area office is. So they have to cut through all of York Mills, which is jammed up at Leslie and York Mills because the cop cars also divert you out. Then you also can't take the Don Valley up north. So you have to go all the way to Victoria Park. You try to wrap a circle to get onto the 401. It it's makes like, no wonder why nobody <laughs> wants to move to Toronto. It's crazyville. I remember I used to, my best friend used to live in Cabbage Town and I lived in Thorn Hill and it took like six minutes to jump on the Don Valley and get there. 
Mm. It was like, and I'm not even kidding. Maybe eight. I'm sure, minutes. you were going like at a time when like, yeah. no one else was going. We we have but like almost still, double the population, so what, it's it, given. that's that's very true. But I mean, like you'd think that as the population was doubling, like maybe they wouldn't make the road system worse, right? Like and, maybe there was an improvement at some point. And that's a perfect segue for you guys to talk about how it'll build infrastructure for all the population we got coming in. Maybe oh like a crosstown LRT God. or something like that. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, that would take some hours if off. We the thought road. about it like 10, 15 years ago and you know got it going back then. That'd be cool. Tried to think about it. Yeah. And so what's new, Zen? I mean, <laughs> let's let's just get just introduce Zen first. Okay. We're starting the show. We're here already. For like the last year, you are our most viewed video. One or number one or number two? Number one. Number one, right? Number one. Until oh, wow. recently. Until and it was like, recently. you know, we, it was just crushing it out there. Just every week, it was just climbing more and more and more. And I have no idea what we were talking oh. about that episode, but obviously it was good stuff, right? And that's the main thing is that, you know, there's good content out there. Zen too, power. And Zen's a busy guy. He's selling properties and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, his name, his name crossed paths with mine. And I thought, I got to get Zen back on the show. We got to We got to talk to him and try to try to put out another banger. So yeah. what's new, Zen? How's how's life? How's the YouTube channel? I noticed you're doing some shorts now. Good way to go. That's pretty cool. Doing what what else is shorts, happening? Shorts, YouTube, just parenthood. That's really it. Oh, <laughs> no. Parenthood. Nice. <laughs> I said, there, I got the new. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. It's a distraction. Yeah, it's not a distraction. It's a different way now that like the scheduling is a little bit more difficult to do things. So obviously, just have to grow the team more and get more leverage and can't be everywhere all the time, everywhere exactly. all the time. Mm. Yeah. But videos at home, yeah. right? Videos, videos at home. home, right? You're just, videos you know, you can be like, well, like this with the little, the baby stroller and, and the, the little uh, uh, bassinet. And then at the same time doing a video. I mean, that's what YouTubers do. That's exactly what we do. It's just what you don't see off the screen is what we yeah. do on the side. Yeah, exactly. Solid persona, solid persona. But everything else is good. Market's moving along. I'm sure you got to talk about it before, but Start to slow down, getting a little bit of inklings of, you know, buyer demand is out, maybe get some inventory buildup, which is probably good for us. Okay. So you're seeing that? Well, give me, give yeah. us some like anecdotal stuff here. I mean, what's, what are you seeing like as far as listings building up? Mm, we, the one that I went to go see your listing on where we're doing a little bit of market research, mm -hmm. I think we went to yours was because I was like, oh, yeah, you guys are going to be a competition for us. We're like, okay, are we better than TK's listing? <laughs> Not as good. Oh, uh, <laughs> That's why I went. And <laughs> we, I talked to a different guy. And again, look, this is just like inside baseball, right? Just to see what's out there. But we had another guy who had something similar to us, and he had the property listed same price. 100 showings, 27 offers. We came two weeks later, 80 showings, nine offers. Uh, we had a client buy a place. They had... 67 showings we put a bully in uh, what i think was a little bit of you know where fair market price was and they didn't take it they wanted more come offer date zero offers when was so offer like, date monday so whatever this goes out this monday yeah, yeah a bunch so like of places got much. came up at that 700 price point yeah i was yeah, like i'm the... seeing it everywhere yeah so everywhere as in where? Like you're seeing it like so Toronto, you're seeing it condos, you're seeing it. Well. So we're like in GTA. So we're looking well, at seeing what exactly? No bids? No, like the number of offers are down a lot more, like down significantly more. But still multiple. Well, I mean, multiple, like two multiples and sellers aren't getting what they want, right? What they expected. What they expected, right? Like without are, giving away we, what like are we are poo-pooing having more than one offer is this what we've come down to here in toronto it depends that if on you where, don't if, get multiples if you've priced it at a point where it's low and then yeah. you only get two it's shocking like, whoa that's shocking exactly so if you have a house that's like call it a million bucks you price it at 7.99 and you get no offers that is shocking somebody yeah. around here just priced something and I can't imagine that they're not trying to get multiple offers on it because they priced it low, but they priced it at a million thirty. And so isn't that kind of dumb? Like, don't you want those people searching for up to a million in your search? Like, wouldn't you want to be at nine ninety nine? And like, why why one million thirty? Any insight, guys? Need more context think... on that one, though. It's hard to say. Yeah, it's a, it's a hot debate. Yeah. I'm a, I'm an even number guy. So, you know, some people are the 999s and all that. I'm an I'm an even number guy, but I mean, you know, 
Try to sell the same property 900. twice at the same time and get the results. Good luck. So, but are you yeah. going over that million dollar number on purpose to eliminate all the people looking for stuff under a million? Or are, is that like just, I don't know. Is that I don't know why that person in particular, but it, it, it's hard to say, but like the demand has definitely died off from like, I would say frenzy started like mid Feb, usually when there's no new listings, then March it picked up and April, the sellers are like, Oh, Hey, there's some stuff picking up. And usually, you know, high prices sellers come to the market. So we got a surge in listings in May that stuff got sold. And anyone who's coming to market now, I think either the demand has settled or people are just like, oh, you know what, I'm going to wait a little bit. And then kind of see what happens in the fall. And like, I think one of the problems with, you know, what we do as content creators is obviously, you know, we need to get the eyeballs and, you know, somewhat clickbaity stuff. But I think everyone's sensationalizing seasonality right now. And I've been saying it for months. Like, you're supposed to get more listings in March. You're supposed to see more sales in May. <laughs> like 40% of the time, May is the highest price kind of uh, month of the entire year. So all of this is normal. And I've been tracking it. We're like, I don't know, one deviation point outside of seasonal norm, but we had pent up demand from last year. So all of this I find is normal. And TK, you've been doing this long enough. I think we're just going back to the norm. We're not seeing crazy pandemic stuff anymore, right? Which mm. everyone's been used to the last two, three years, or you just haven't been licensed since 2020. You don't even know what seasonality is. Yeah, I think it's the first normal spring we've had for a long time. Yeah, we said that normal. on the show a couple months ago. Just exactly right. It's just hey, this will be like a very normal type of spring market. But you're right. I mean, I, I think even realtors are guilty of it too, right? Just because you forget, you know, and you're like, oh, what's going on? Is the market? And now we're going into the summer. It's like it's going to crash again. Oh no, the world's going to end. My listing's been on the market for two weeks. I know. We've only weeks, had oh, no. eleven showings, <laughs> which is what's normal in 2019 and 2018 if you were around yeah. for that long. Yeah, exactly. So. Like it's still abnormal for most other cities. Like nothing works like that anywhere else where it's like one day on the market or no days on the market or 67 showings and 19 offers. Like this is not normal stuff, I don't think. But, no, but even no. Ryan Sirhan said that about Toronto's pre-con market. Yeah. He's like, you guys sell out a whole building in a day? He's like, what? He's like, and this is New York City, like, you know, top broker here, right? He's just like, you guys can sell a whole freaking building in one day. It's like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Toronto's different. That it that is building different. is sold before that day. It just they won't let any of the people buy it until that day, right? Yeah. There's already everybody's getting these stupid worksheets going and everybody's being told, hey, there's like nine to one on, uh, you know, units to, to worksheets here. So but I got you know, I got an allocation. That's right. Yeah. I got an allocation and be ready to accept your third choice, right? Yeah, it's the elbow unit, but make sure you got that $5,000 draft ready. Right? Right. You're okay with the smell of garbage, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think Toronto, like real estate world, is just really good at marketing. I think that's one thing that we're very good at selling. It's and a then you giant mix... marketing yeah, machine. Yeah, it is. And when you mix that in with like everybody wanting to own real estate as a Canadian, and most immigrants want to own real estate, then there you go, right? It's just like a perfect recipe. Because if you ask me, like people who are buying pre-construction, like most people are local, but I would say like they're first, second generation tops. You're not going to get people who like, you know, have great grandpas that are, you know, very Canadian that are buying these things. I don't really see them at the sales center. Yeah. Not do, anybody I know. Do, they, um, but do the younger kids even have a problem with the condos? Like don't, like my kids, at least one of them was like, She'd be fine living in a condo. She doesn't care. She wants to live downtown in a condo. Do the kid do do the, like is it the older generation that's kind of upset about what they're doing to the next generation that's really happening, or is there people that are like this? Just is the worst thing ever. I can't live in one of these. I think it's overblown. Like I like right? living in a condo. I would go back into a condo if it provided me like enough space. I'm just in the house right now because I don't have a choice. I'm married. <laughs> Me too. I would live in a condo in two seconds, bro. My wife would never do it though. And I and I said, we could have the nicest condo. And I, I know I wouldn't have to worry about the grass. And like we could have our cars would be warm every time we go into them, you know? Mm -hmm. No, exactly. no fucking chance. I need well, trees. How, how how do you feel about moving down to um, the bridal path? In a condo there? No, just in a house on the bridal path. Who are you path. asking? Who are you asking? Daryl. <laughs> me? Yeah. It's too big for me. But, but you I don't mean, think listen. about it, right? Because you know it's out of reach. It's like, who's you know going mean? to drop? I don't think about it. Who's, I think who... about it all the time. Okay. But you're not sitting there going like, I better start saving my money to 
get that three and a half million dollar down payment. You're not, you're not doing that. And the kids, I'm imagining I think, are, introducing are looking, myself. They're to, looking at house drink. prices and they're going, I'm never going to afford a house. Yeah. Therefore, be owning a condo just becomes normalized. Looks good. Looks and good. And so they're they're that's what it is. I don't think everybody wants to live in a condo. I think there's lots of people who would be just like how we would have been growing up in a house. You want to live in the same house that you grew up in. But the reality is, is who can afford to live in a house? I mean, what's the I got I got a house down at Jane and Weston for eight hundred thousand dollars. That's a two bedroom. That it's not doing too bad. But uh, if you want to live at Jane and Weston, right? So yeah. well, you gotta like imagine who the buyers are too, right? Like I think because I came here young enough, right? Like so, really early nineties. The idea of owning a home is still feasible at the time. Obviously, I was too young to remember. But where I came from, like we have an eight hundred square foot three bedroom in China, right? So in like a pretty populated place. And it fits my grandma, my mom, me, my cousin, and his parents. So that's three families, three generations. And that's the norm. So when you come here, even if you're not coming in bags and bags of money, right? And you can say, hey, you can buy land here for a million dollars in, I don't know, it's some place not Toronto. Of course, they're going to do it. Because if you own land, in like really populated countries and cities that are in China and like say India, you are, are like Elon Musk rich or you had it for generations, right? So when you come here and you tell people, well, hey, can I own land and do I want to kind of like FOMO into it? They're 100% going to because they've seen what happens to property prices in very populated cities. Like mm -hmm. Toronto is very populated, it's 5 million people, but the city I came from has like 22 million people. Right. Mm -hmm. It's nothing. It's like a drop in a bucket. So the idea, you know, I, I live in a 500 square feet, one bedroom condo. That's big. I had three generations, six people live in 800 square feet. Mm -hmm. That's I know it's what funny. I'm in the but East. It's, I noticed it recently. So, because I Googled this, we always have those articles that come up where it's like, you know, blog TO is like, Toronto's been rated the number one most demand country for all university graduates, post grads looking for their master's degree in uh, mathematics, you know? And it's like, yeah, we're at the top of the list. And they keep putting out these like surveys. It's like, we're number one, multicultural, best food, the most desirable place to live, most happiness. To... And it's like, it's all BS. It's all Toronto propaganda. Cause uh -huh. when like one day I was like, yeah, we have like so many languages here. I'm like, let's look at the top 10 um, cities in the world with the most languages. We weren't even on the top 10. We weren't even at the top 10. I swear we were number one. You know, New York's number one. Like there's all these other countries out there that have way more, you know, diversity. Languages? Than we do. How many more yeah. fucking languages can you have than in I Toronto? I guess more than what we have. I'm telling you. So more. all those okay. things that we believe are making Toronto so diverse is the propaganda that our media feeds us because Toronto's got a huge ego. And we think it's great. That's why people love the real estate because everyone thinks Toronto is the greatest city in the world and that there couldn't possibly be a better place to live. And so therefore buying real estate here is where everyone wants. It's it's a it's a phenomenon. And, and anybody listening to the show who's not from Toronto will agree to that for sure. It, it, it can't like, like, can you imagine flying into Toronto, never being here before and seeing all the fucking cranes in the sky? Like, like, what is going on here? Have you ever even driven like down south to Florida and driven through all the major cities along the way? There's like each one of these cities has like four buildings that are like 12 stories or higher. Right. There's like these little like Mississauga's downtown is more impressive than most cities downtowns in the United States. It's really true. But Toronto is like next level construction. This is like Dubai level construction. I don't think so many people actually realize that. Mm. It's insane. It, really, it depends where you come from, what lens and how much you traveled. Right. Like. I would say we've been to a lot of places. We've seen a lot of cities like we've been through I don't know, like 40, 45 countries. And I always gravitate back to like, I don't think Toronto is the best at anything, kind of like what TK was saying, but it's good or great at most things. Like the analogy I always like to use for people is like, let's say I go to Japan, let's say I go to Dubai, let's say I go here, let's go there. I always come back and I'm like, hey, you know what? Because we're so multicultural, I can find the food equivalent of what I got in that city, like 80, 90% here. And that's what I would say is what we're good at. We take a little bit of everything, we merge it all together, and we're like a melting pot of like good to great, but we're never the best at anything. Mm. Mm -hmm. But we feel like we are. 
if you don't leave Toronto, yes. you if think, you don't leave Toronto, you feel like Toronto's yeah, you're top, like, top this top is top. the yeah. greatest there is out there. You can't get a better shawarma anywhere. This shawarma is fantastic. This there's just no way you can make a better shawarma. And then you like you go pretty much anywhere else, and you're like, oh, okay, oh, that's pretty good shawarma here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, like, Montreal. I say, hey, is yeah, that, is better. It's not yeah. the best place to kind of be to be like the. Yeah, they're but it, they're, it, they're pretty it leads, good. At, it leads good to that things. type of stuff. What do you uh, what do you think about the May uh, stats? Then any surprises there? Anything that you're sort of like. No, I think that's a given. I think this is probably where we'll peak for the year. That's kind of been my thesis. Okay. Like I think it was a little bit shy of 1.2 mil on average. They had mm-hmm. the detached homes up like $300,000, I think, in the city. And this is normal. And then we'll probably slow down in the summertime, pick back up a little in the fall, not make it as high because the demand's already sucked out. And then you got a looming recession and then voila, that's it. This is all expected. Simple. I was even preparing a lot of my clients who are like buying or like selling. I'm like, look, you're not going to get these main numbers again. I think they're out. They either wait to the fall, hope for something a little bit better. And when you're buying, it'll be less competitive. Don't FOMO into something. Yeah. yeah. I'm a little bit de- de- Detached numbers, clearly a bunch of more expensive properties were selling, right? Always. So high, Always. Higher end stuff. People were confident. They saw a lot, a lot of frenzy buying. So they thought, okay, well, if that guy's buying, for that much money, then it must be safe for me to spend $2.3 million on this place. Yeah. You even look at stuff like in uh, Midtown or like just go to the lease side. There's like so many properties that came up and they all sold, right? That's going to mm-hmm. skew your average way higher because your starting point's like two plus still. Mm-hmm. Right? So what is and that? Then... Is that the smart money getting out now? The oh, ones that f- figured they missed their opportunity, they got they got out now? I mean, the ones we've been looking with some of our clients, like they've been in the family for years. No one's flipping these things or like they've held them for more than three years. I don't think they're getting out. I think they're just moving on with life. I think everyone's, again, over sensationalizes like, you know, people losing money, making money in real estate, but really just people need to move. They need more space. Life happens, separations, death, a lot of estate sales I was seeing. And that stuff's moving. I'm not working with many investors right now. Most people are just end users and they're buying these homes. They're not going 80% loan to value, they're like selling something and moving into it, or they get like a huge down payment. So like, mm-hmm. I don't see anyone going 80% loan to value at 5% at these current prices. It's just, if you're in the market, you increase your mortgage by two, $300,000, you take up the equity from your existing and voila, you're good. You're not like, you know, burning a hole or your mortgage payments are like triple or anything. I think it's a little bit all overblown. They want kind of like- That just was like, happening though. Oh, I mean, it was when the With interest the 2% rates were really low, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, but now not anymore. And like this whole like negative amortization thing, I think it's a little bit overblown too. Like, yeah, we have negative amortization properties too, but like, cool. Like, is it going to fix itself by the time I get there? Probably. Will I wait until the last minute and then like get screwed over? No, I'll probably liquidate or refinance at some point and then call it a day. So I the renewal crisis isn't real, Zen? No, is that what you're no. saying? No, it's not <laughs> no happening. Way. There's your, there's your clickbait. There's your title right there, right? No <laughs> renewal crisis. No renewal crisis. Hmm. Think about it. We got talked about this like crazy because we we're all concerned coming out of the pandemic. You got your mortgage deferral cliff. TK, you remember that? Everyone's oh, yeah. like, oh my God, we're going to get so many much inventory. Make sure you sell now. T- TK shot out. that thing off the cliff the minute he heard it. Deferral well done. cliff. What was the yeah. next one? What was the next one? Do you remember? Then you got the payments were going up, right? You know, everyone trigger rates. Trigger, trigger rates. Yes, rates. Trigger, trigger rates. rates. Trigger rates. <laughs> yes, yes. Trigger rates. And I was like, ah, that's going to be nothing. Let's see how the banks go. And then I remember saying, I wasn't sure how the market was going to be this year because I was like, we got to wait till these privates all renew or like the B lenders because they went from like one year fixes at four to like eight to nines and even like 16%. And then that was like March or so. Nothing. Hoping that was going to be helping uh, with the inventory. And then now we got like, you know, another three years out or two years out, depending on how you calculate it, negative amortization. It's kind of like at some point, like a broken clock is going to be right. And eventually you'll say something and they're going to be like, I told you so. But Mm -hmm. if you just own real estate anytime, except for buying between call it early 2022, are you not better ahead? Yep. Yeah. Like you don't day trade your primary residence. It's like, you don't do anything. I just, it's I, just funny. Sold a, I just sold a property uh, this week where a guy bought it, a, a couple of brothers bought it in 1988. Okay. For 190,000. Okay. And so I asked them and, and they actually bought several properties around this time. And so they were caught in the, you know, real estate bug of the eighties. Yeah. And I said like, how the heck did you guys get through the nineties? 
because they're telling me, they're just like, we remember when this went down to like 120, you know, like they just watch their investment like shrink to nothing. And obviously interest rates and all that kind of stuff too. And they just, they weren't heavily leveraged. You know, they were able to kind of get in. They had the right amount of uh, uh, LTV, you know, to be able to, to withstand it. They had, they were brothers, so they had different incomes to be able to support it. They rented out the properties, low rents, like never raised rents. It was a real like, you know, type of tight situation. And now they're cashing out. And so I look at people now like that, whoever can withstand this storm, even if you bought at that peak in February, 2022, if you can just hang on and keep that property and maintain, service that debt, you're eventually going to come out okay, you know, but yeah, it might be a better. while. <laughs> it, it might be a while, while and it might, might need to hurt wait. a lot. Yeah. Those guys had to wait probably 12 to 15 years before well, they were okay. Depends how you financed 80s, but... it at the beginning, right? Like if you yeah. bought in 2022 on a short-term mortgage, you're pretty fucked, right? If you bought at any point in the last two, three years on a short one to three-year term, you're probably pretty fucked. You're going to get a little shock on that new renewal. So maybe it won't be a crisis, but it'll feel like it for a bunch of people. That's for damn sure. So, so, so having said everything we said so far, where do you see the market going? Like between now and the end of this year, do you see prices kind of still heading up because of our inventory situation, or do you see things leveling off or coming down a bit? It'll come down. I'm going to just kind of guess 3% until August, maybe four. Oh, yeah. And then it'll go up 5% in September, October. They'll come back down in November, but the ending price in December will be less than what it is right now, which is Boom. just seasonal norms. That's it. Like yeah. everyone just tries to like predict what's going to go. But like, if you take out the last two years and you should look at the average on like the change of month over month, that's just what it is. The only anomalies are pandemic 2017 craziness from like the for like actual foreign money. And then you have the stress test. When you take those things out and you've been in the market long enough since like that decade, it's normal. 25, you, 30 you, year, like, like 1990, like three, it's literally showing the same thing every year. But yeah. you yeah, don't, it's, it's you don't think enough things changed in the world that affected the real estate market that may have had a, a, a different effect than normal. Like you don't think all this work from home stuff has had a significant enough effect on real estate. Uh, I mean, mixed with all the stuff you just said. I mean, look at what values did. You know, I was up uh, in Eagle Lake last weekend. Do you know where Eagle Lake is? No, it sounds fancy, though. It was not fancy by any means. Oh. It was last <laughs> second, and we had to get away after our whole flooring fiasco that lasted for well over a month. Anyways, so we're up at Eagle Lake, and we're talking to this guy. He's giving us a boat tour, and he's like, the prices in Eagle Lake, they're, they're not much money. Like, maybe buy a house for two something three something there's they're like cottages you know these Is are not like, ontario yeah it's maybe okay. uh two hours two and a half hours north of here um yeah. north of halliburton but anyway so he's like everybody's got to move out because nobody can afford to live here anymore because all the people from you know toronto or other places are coming here because it's super cheap and i was like oh no like this is happening everywhere like everybody's getting squeezed and getting pushed away and I mean, maybe this isn't bad, though, right? Like, I know people don't want to not live where they wanted to live, but maybe, like, spreading things out. I mean, it's a pretty big fucking country. It's a pretty big, bloody province, for God's sakes. Like, there's room for these people if we spread out a little bit. We don't all have to live in cheap condos. Well, I think there's merit for if you can work from home. But I think the scare is how long you can work from home for, right? Hmm. And, like, is this phenomenon going to be forever? Like, I have no idea. I'm not studying any of this, right? The way I look at the ability for people to work from home and move further for more space, it just allows you to basically, you know, thrive till you qualify, right? So these places that are further away become more expensive because Toronto money is coming. But if you really just look at kind of like why prices are going up, like I always circle back to this. It's just, there's more money in the system. Like even before we had all this like inflation talk, I was always talking to like my clients. It's like, the value of your home isn't going up. It's just the value of your dollar has been going down, right? Mm -hmm. Like the dollar you have is worth less. Like I always joke, but like when I moved to like York region, I used to go to a Chinese grocery store and I buy a pack of basil and it's like 99 cents. If you guys ever go to a grocery store, it's like wrapped in saran wrap. So you can't see the back. So you know, like the uglier side of the vegetables are on the back, but like the pretty side is in the front. 
So that was 99 cents. I just picked some up last week. And it's like four bucks now. So I don't think like house prices are going up. They're just the dollar is getting worse less. That's all I see it. And when you, and Daryl, you'll know this because you're a developer, your material, your raw material isn't getting any cheaper. You can't sell it for less. So your replacement cost is actually higher than your existing cost. There's no way it's going to get cheaper. It just doesn't make any sense unless we have some massive deflationary kind of effect. And the government knows they can't have deflation. They're more afraid of deflation than they are inflation because deflation means that their money will never be paid back. They're actually needing inflation to make their money more flexible and pay it back in future terms. So when you mix in whole red tape, government bureaucracy, and all this other jazz I just talked about, and what we talked about like 10, 20 minutes earlier, I just can't see prices coming down. And then you sprinkle in a little immigration dust on it, boom, super <laughs> permeable, right? Yeah. Like we're gonna have short-term volatility, but like all of this sense, all the stuff I just said makes sense why prices go up. I don't think it's just a Toronto phenomenon. If you look at other large cities that are in demand and like it's been pumped up like Toronto has, it's bound to happen, right? That's just how I see it. Mm -hmm. What you yeah. said there too proves that these inflation numbers we're giving us are nowhere near accurate, right? Yeah. Because if we're running out of like a four and a half CPI or something like that, I mean, nothing has gone up four and a half percent at the end of the day, year over year, right? Like Except everything for is, real estate. Everything. <laughs> well, I mean, real estate's trending higher, right? If we look yeah. at, uh, you know, over the last 10 years, right? Like seven or percent, something like that. Right, yeah. So we're, yeah. we're all the things that, so whether it's the real estate's appreciating, the, the, the value of our dollars are going down, you know, it's all relative. It's like, what can I buy? That's the true measure of inflation. What can I buy with my money? And what do people want to buy? They want to buy food. They want to buy real estate. They need to buy clothes. They need to buy fuel. fuel. This is the whole point of the CPI basket, right? So it just goes to show you that that CPI, even though they've adjusted it 17,000 times since 2020, they are they are underestimating what inflation truly is. And that the value of your dollar is way, way less than you think it is. And, and you trying to go pay more money for real estate and for housing has nothing to do with anything other than that's what it costs now. So just to prove Zen's point here is we're never going back down to the prices that no. we had from, no, you let's can. say, you you know, doesn't make 20, sense. 2019. Yeah. No, there's really, like, I can't see anything other than disaster pushing stuff down in price. But, like, like even all of these new policies that they've put into place to try and spur on more housing, like, I don't know if you've seen the stats, the applications for new development is down, like, 50 oh, percent or something it's like huge and then we have a crap storm coming man like it's gonna be so bad in five six years well but hold on so that's now but like try putting a development deal together right now okay getting it across the finish line and but i mean you can see it in the stats like land is not trading like it was trading before i think that's even down 50 percent. so imagine the world we live in now all these people flying in applications already down so the way we're already i don't even know how many tens of thousands of units behind if you believe this theory but okay right so we're already behind okay there's super demand there's no it's so hard to put a land deal together right now and people are waiting to put in applications if you looked at any applications lately, which you may not have, because why would you? But they are getting taller and taller like crazy right now. And there's all kinds of people that have been waiting around for this new policies to come out around the subways, these MTSA zones. People, We've all been waiting from like September or something like that. And it's supposed to be next month and next month and it doesn't come out. So you've got all these guys going for broke right now with applications for these crazy tall buildings everywhere. Did you see in, in Niagara Falls? Did you see that story about the tallest building in Ontario is coming to Niagara Falls? Really? No? That's going to be like 80, 90 stories in Niagara? That's what you would think. It's 77 stories. I don't understand how the math works, but this no is way. the article. But hold on. It's a buildings second. like this. Hang on. <laughs> 77 <laughs> stories in Niagara Falls is fucking insane. Okay. It's insane. It's, insane. Yeah, it's, really high. it's like yeah. 20. I think the, the casino uh, falls you is like. Falls you got 10 or 15. Well, no, it high. may be 40 something. But anyways, regardless, it's insane. And, and this is what we're seeing. Now, Brampton has zones that are like unlimited height. Like you can do whatever you want. If it makes sense financially, go crazy. Right. Oh, you, you've got. 
like Pickering. Have you seen Pickering lately? Like Pickering's they've got crazy 40, 50 story towers no. all over the place. It's it's crazy what's going on right now. All the positives Absolutely crazy. Are sold up and down Kingston Road. Kingston Road is going to be a crazy hold on. street to be driving up and down in 25 years from now. But all these guys are just guys that kind of got forced into putting something in because the clock's ticking. You've got all these other guys that have time on the clock still that are just waiting, right? So applications have gone down, which means, like, guess what, everybody? There's zero chance. If there's anything less than zero, there's that chance that we will catch up with supply and supply will help alleviate any pressure. If anything, supply will be a giant contributing factor to the problem. So well, like, I think the easy solution, if you really think about it, is stop letting immigrants in. It's a very xenophobic sounding solution, but that will solve a lot of our this problems. Guy is. Yeah, what a dick. Hey man, as a person who wasn't even <laughs> born here, think about you it. You can right? find him at Prime Properties TO on YouTube. <laughs> right? No, but none of us in this none of us in this call would be here if immigration yeah, yeah, yeah. wasn't possible in Canada. I, I, the I, problem I, is is building the stuff then. That's the issue is is getting the work in. done Let's that we need. It. I wish that my sons were prime candidates for people who are going to be in the trade swinging a hammer, you know, building these things, but they're not, you know, they, they might be that. like designing it, but are robots going to problem. come that soon? They're going to be yeah. in VR headsets controlling the guys on site, right? The yeah. robots on site, like it's a video game. They're going to be building houses on video games. Yeah. That's yeah, kind yeah. of cool, actually. That we would be pretty cool. That'd be super yeah. cool. Yeah. Let's do that. But there it has makes to be sense, some right? kind of development improvement with technology to build faster. To I think the problem is to like, are we going to over-regulate this thing to death? We're like, oh, you know, you can't do it this way because it meets our neighborhood feelings and whatnot, or it's not safe, you need a different type of inspection. Like technology should, in theory, make things easier and cheaper for us, but they don't right now because of regulation. So like, I, I just can't see how prices are going to come down. Like, it, Not to sound super bullish, but like these are some topics we've covered. But like what you're saying about your boys, like they don't want to swing a hammer, but like who's building these things? Like I think we're at max capacity for in terms of like blue collar working building stuff. You even couldn't even get a max crane. capacity as in... Like we can't um, have workload. Yeah. Like I don't think we can build anymore. Where's the I think if we had a, you know, I've, I've talked to construction guys and what's happened over the years is that guys used to be, you know, proud of their work. They want to like spend, you know, look, we, we got three floors done today, you know, and it was very competitive. And now it's like, you know what guys, I heard it's going to rain tomorrow. Why don't we leave early now so that we could get home and put some tarps on the patio furniture just to make sure that nothing bad happens. You know, <laughs> like it's very, it's, it's changed a lot. So the efficiencies have gone down the speed to, to, to uh, construction to finish date has, has gone down. So no, I think, I think we do have to find some more efficiencies um, and that we've got some issues and that's what immigration solves. There's a lot of things. Remember the government also needs to pay off that debt, right? So how do we build the GDP uh, artificially, right? How do we output more, um, uh, business right how do we end up creating more value how do we save all these businesses people well, you you paper over the problem of gdp by bringing more immigration so that your nominal number looks bigger and bigger and bigger because you have more people contributing but mm -hmm. when you do it as like um, per capita uh, yeah. per capita it's trash yeah. right yeah. so the uh, lifestyle is getting worse and worse and the same thing i think whose report i read is like i think the uh, condo investing negative cash flow one like the homes per capita built is less than what it was 20 years ago. Yeah. That's a big point right there. We're not going to have enough supply. Yeah. There was also um, something that uh, Foch posted that said the number one search realtor.ca term or, or city was Calgary. Mm -hmm. So that tells you something that people are looking online for these other options where they want to go. There's a, I think there's a limit that even though right now, I still, I still like I'm bullish on Toronto long-term. It's a great city. It's going to be where it is, but people are at their limit. They're at their financial limit. They're at their, their, their emotional limit. You know, there's going to be people who are spreading. What do you think Zen's going to happen as far as like um, urban sprawl throughout the other provinces? Do you think that we're going to see people, is there going to be incentives for immigrants to want to move to these other cities? Is there going to be, you know, people wanting to move to the, just for cost of living? Like what's the. A hundred percent. I talked to a lot of young people who have a condo. They're like, well, do I, sell the condo and buy a home here. It's like all over a million bucks. Or do I sell this place and I can be mortgage free in Calgary. And mm -hmm. the thing that keeps coming up is like, if one of them can work remotely and the other one can't, the one who can't work remotely has a hard time going there. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas one who can remote will probably potentially think about it. Sure. Um, but like, it makes a lot of sense. Like, I think 
if we are going to talk about a lot of people moving to Calgary, and I think there's a lot of people like net immigration, sorry, like uh, intra-migration out, there's been tons. But the problem is that we still have more and more immigration coming in that's coming into the city, right? So I think net, net Toronto's going to gain population and so will like places like Calgary. And the unfortunate thing is it's just going to be really expensive to live in Toronto and you basically have to be like super wealthy or your family has been here to actually own a home. So, but how many houses transact in Toronto in a year? 80, 90,000 in GTA on, on the MLS on average on MLS. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you then, need like, let's say 80 to a hundred thousand buying groups that can afford something, right? Like it's not that many when you think about it and you got all these mm-hmm. people coming in and all people have to do stuff internally and all the emigration, immigration, like it's not that high a bar, is it? I don't think it's, it is like, I work at a lot of people kind of like in their thirties, right? And most of them have a lot of help from parents, right? And it's not like you have to have rich parents, but again, I'll give you kind of like idea from my culture. Anyone who immigrated here in the early nineties, you would have bought real estate kind of like TK story for like 150, $180,000. And like the, a lot of them bought homes in like Riverdale, you know, this is like where the East Chinatown is, they all settled there. And culturally you just buy the home and you pay off the debt because you're afraid of interest. But these guys were like mortgage free in like 10, 15 years. Now that home is now worth like a million, million two, just a part of land. And that's being divvied up into all the kids. And then they now have a down payment and they just get a regular mortgage of like $500,000 that they can get on like an 80, $90,000 income. And they're good to go. So like, it's just the money keeps getting passed down because if you own real estate, your equity is there to pass on multi-generation. The things that suck is people who come in and they don't have that kind of help. You basically have to make like $200,000 before you even start saving for the down payment. So Mm -hmm. that's alienating a lot of people. But our transactions still keep happening because there's so much equity in the system. 100%. Prices have more than quadrupled in the last like 20 years. So anyone who's in the system can have it passed down. It's the wealth transfer. But it's just the people who aren't able to get in is the ones that are going to be contemplating to move to a different cities or different opportunities so they actually own a home. And it's going to be very segregated. That's it. Well, what the guy in Eagle Lake... Licking their chops. Oh, yeah. They they love it. Oh, yeah. What what do you guys think the percentage of mortgage-free homes is in Toronto? Well, they say in Canada, it's like a third. In Toronto, what do you think? I saw someone post... I thought it was like uh, 50%, wasn't it? One of my colleagues posted it. I'm going to say like 40, 45. Good. 43% mortgage-free. That's good. How'd you get that number? I'll send it to you. Okay, okay, cool. I got a chart of all the cities. 43%. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's have what I'm saying. Like, no and mortgage. That's, no, and mortgage. That's no mortgage. Uncapped equity. That's un- now, I would question that number because does that count line of credits? Because now you're pulling from it, right? Not like a registered charge. Good point. I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't know exactly how it's calculated, but regardless, it's definitely something that you've got to you know, take into consideration is we don't have this huge over leveraged uh, group well, of people I, out there who are all suffering. you got a bunch of people who are just like watching the equity grow and just like they're paying what? Like I just sold on my street for a price that's like the highest price ever. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm sure my neighbors who are all old are all sitting there going like, I paid $200,000 for this thing 30 years sure. ago. Like, what do you mean he paid that that number for that property, right? And yeah, that's and, something that- And I think that's the norm. So like this idea, like the bubble is going to burst or whatever, like it's- for lack of a better term, it's people who want it to burst so they can be opportunistic. Didn't it but burst? I, isn't this like the, didn't it burst already? Is it going to burst te- again? Is this well, going to happen <laughs> again soon? I the renewal crisis, Daryl. Come on. Yeah, no, the renewal crisis. I thought we I don't had think it our technically burst. crashed. No, it was, I think didn't technically it? you have to be 20% down from whatever the peak price is. We've got a correction. If you're in Durham, hold on. Correction. If you live in Durham at, at a certain point in time, that thing crashed. No, Bancroft crashed with like all these places Bancroft's went down more than but, 20. But I saw there were, there were places that, that Toronto a, was a 18. major adjustment. Yeah. Yeah. There were yeah, major probably. crashes all over yeah. the place. So hold on a sec. So does that, do you think that could happen again? It, that's not even a crash. Hold on a sec. Just do you well, think uh, we let's could ask see Dennis, a correction? Then, then paint a picture in the most bearish of mindsets. How would a crash happen in Toronto? Happen? What would have to happen knowing everything that you know? Give us a scenario. Just to please the people in the comments here. This is what they want to yes. hear this. And yes, we'll make a short of this. Immigration <laughs> stops because Canada's afraid of immigrants taking all their jobs. And then we have less immigrants. And then there's a demand for 
workers and then the increase in prices allow people to buy stuff. And then at that point, because there's no immigration, higher wages, people can move around with the higher income. And then higher we see, income. No, hold hey, on a yeah. sec. But people, Let how much finish, do you Jenna. need? We got, we got, Let no, I'm saying the whole, the whole story the in, here. Because the income will go up, it gives them flexibility to move around so they can buy stuff, but then they won't necessarily need to because their options open up, right? And then you have the crazy inflation scare that everyone's afraid of right now, and they don't get it under control. So nobody wants to lend anymore. And then the banks, their loan loss provisions get really out of hand, and then they can't lend anymore. Then you have no liquidity, and you can't buy unless you're buying all cash. And then boom, there's your crash. You have a massive price discovery downwards where nobody is, for lack of a better term, left holding the bag. Nobody wants to buy in Toronto, even though they have income and they go somewhere else. And Toronto's a derelict city. How dare you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, like the question that, is, do you let it yeah, happen? Yeah. Very low chance, right? Very low chance, right? Of all that stuff. The government just it, yeah, refuses to let it happen. You know, they refuse. They're just like, this is everyone's, we can all, I can give you, you know, all other things being equal. I can tell you a scenario why the market's going to crash next month, but the banks and the government are just too heavily invested. There's a bunch of people talking about, they don't want the housing ministers to be allowed to have rental properties. They Who don't cares? want politicians. And like, there's just too many people invested in this to ever let it go down. So how well, much how, how how much higher can wages actually get like to afford the houses as prices go up as we all think they are? Like look right now, how much do you need to afford like a shitty house? I think it's over. Like people always think you are people are doing 20% down like the minimum amount they can, but most people buying your average home aren't doing 20% down. So like TK, if the average home is 1.2 million as of like May 2023, the end of the stats, right? Nobody's going in with like, you know, $200,000 and getting 80, 80, a million mortgage. Most people are selling in their home that's like worth five, dollars $600,000, pouring it yeah. over and maybe getting a six, $700,000 mortgage, right? Yeah. So they're like, you know, 35, 40% down in it. So they're not that exposed, right? They just need the more no. space. Hold on they're a sec. What just happened there? So, but you're it's saying somebody sold a house for one, two, and then bought a house for one, no, no, two? No, no. Someone in that scenario? sold their condo for like yeah. six, seven hundred, and they bought the average Cash. home of one point two with no leverage well, on well, it. Well, they might no, have had well, a little bit, but regardless, yeah. is what he's trying to say is that if they were just buying one home at a million dollars, then it's like, oh my gosh, a million dollar home—that's such a big purchase. But because they are they're selling for eight hundred and they're buying for a million. You know, they're not looking at what price am I paying? And we were talking Who about this a that, lot of though? years ago. It's not even realistic. They're, they're Who buys, their sells monthly for 800? If they're you're buy, selling, I know, but your monthly okay. payment just went up by 4% on your mortgage. Like they're, they're, this is a- Maybe a, they maybe they had a lower interest rate. You blend regardless. and extend it's, a lot it's of normal. times. Yeah, it's, yeah normal. It's, it's very normal. Like the one person, I think this year off the top, man, that did buy their first home being a million bucks, they had $600,000 cash. Wow. Oh, right? That's- Parents. First, yeah, first, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bank and mom and dad for sure on that. Bank and mom and dad, that's it. Who right? has the totally. patience to save 600K before they buy? Who, I, nobody. Who could do that? Nobody. If they like, could, how does like that 20 even years work? later, they would have bought right. in that time. They were better off buying 10 years ago with 50 grand down. Yeah, so yeah. no one's maxing out the loan to value. And that's the assumption I think all the well, bears but, are making that the uh, loan to values are maxed out. Like, yeah, there are going to be some people who have maxed out loan to value because they push the limit. But most people right now, after what we went through, aren't pushing the limit. So how uh, much is that that six hundred thousand dollar mortgage now at five something percent? Like three grand or so. Thirty six hundred, yeah. There you go, yeah. Thirty six hundred bucks. Not that bad. When I got when I got my first mortgage, it was like it was I thought it was crazy and it was like twelve hundred bucks a month. Thirty six hundred bucks a month for an average shitty fucking house. This is crazyville. This but aren't is you making more money now? Of, yeah, but you know how much <laughs> fucking harder I work now than I worked back then? It, it's so different. Like things, the gap got crazy. I'm telling you, okay? I don't it was way like easier to buy a house when I was younger. And I'm not that much older than you guys. When my parents, it was that much easier. Money went further. That's just the truth. But now, so so I hear everything you're saying, and I don't disagree with you, but like you have to make 250 grand like household income to have a decent house in the GTA, not even a good house in the GTA. And 
like how long did you have to be earning that kind of money to actually save up to buy a fucking house if you didn't have any help and be able to actually qualify for that mortgage like you have to make 250 for a long time to save a down payment to buy a house that you can afford with a $250,000 income. Assuming you're buying the average home at 1.2, which in Toronto is like a three bedroom semi, right? But if you're buying an entry level condo for yourself or you and your partner are buying a one plus one because you work from home, that's like 650, 700 with parking. Oh. You divide that by five, call it roughly. It's not that bad. No, but who the hell people. wants to make that much money and live in a shoebox? Fuck, that sucks. That's why people are going to Calgary because you can work that hard and live in a palace, right? That's why those companies like um, we, uh, I think we had them on the show or we maybe hung them out to dry there. It's one of those companies that was like two, two and a half percent down and then they were equity. Oh, um, something key, something key. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, and so oh, these rent to own but that That's yeah, why those scams. exist because there's a lot of people with no savings, but high incomes, right? And that's, right. that's the issue. And they're younger people, although they did say that a lot of their clientele were older people too, you know, who just maybe missed out on being able to get into the market, getting divorced, these type of life things. Yeah, but um, how, how many homes do you think there are in Toronto? Like just say GTA, including condos. Total? Yeah. I Good asked question. this 1.5 million. Okay. That's kind of what I guess too. Like I yeah. think I've read a report somewhere. How many people do we have in the city? Five million? Five 416? Yeah, we're like three and a no, half. No, no, like, like GTA, GTA. Oh, GTA is like seven. Like, no, like, like eight, over eight, eight, eight now. Eight, yeah. Nine, yeah. yeah, Yeah, it's almost yeah. nine, I think. So nine divided by 1.5. That's not enough. How many There's households? more. There's no, more. No. Oh, yeah. It's so average of like uh, 1.5 was max. Toronto proper. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. We're definitely no, so, so in the three and a Tor half million households. Oh, let's, okay, let's use Toronto proper. So you got five mil people, like 5.5 in Toronto, divide by 1.5. That's what, mm -hmm. like three to four, three and a half people per home? Do you think that's how many people each home? No. Right. You, it's still at the end of the day, like if things are really expensive. They're expensive because there's more demand for that product. Right. If there was no demand for the product, prices wouldn't necessarily need to go up. That's mm. it. It's very simple. Like I think, you know, everyone who's a pundit, including myself, like talking head, like we overanalyze the situation. We just boil it down to Occam's razor, the simplest thing. And the simplest thing is we have too many people looking for homes. And if we they can't get it here, are they going to move? Absolutely. But are those people who are moving enough, like a large proportion of them, going to allow the inventory to build up here? I don't think so, because the people who are here that can't buy weren't going to buy anyways, just like we said, unless mm -hmm. you are doubling and tripling your income or you have help from mom and dad. The people who are buying here have money, and that's the unfortunate fact. It's They're the, buying their second and third properties. Exactly. Like, we, like, TK, you must have come across this. Like, when you're talking to someone who's trying to buy their next home, how often does it come up? They're like, oh, how do we keep our house? What's the rental rate on this? Oh, the rents are that high? Why don't we put it there and try to get a little bit of more mortgage? We're only paying less like now than minutes. before, but it was like all of my friends. That's what we did in our twenties. There was nobody. Yeah. I'd be yeah. like, okay, let's figure out a way to keep your property and yeah. not sell it. And so that you can keep it as a rental. Very, very normal. So less point. people today, but how many conversations are, are condos about... more often than, than anything actually. Adding yeah, like a now. laneway or a garden suite to make things make sense. Like how many of the conversations go that way? Well, what if we add a garden suite? The num a lot of people try to do huh? it. I've had a lot of conversations like this. Doesn't work. It. This is but the then, yeah, the numbers don't pencil. The numbers don't pencil. Never. No sense. I was yeah. in Foch's, uh, Foch had a, a Twitter space and you had all these people. Who's Foch? Daniel Foch, a guy, a guy on Twitter, Another oh, one, yeah, of our, one, guess, one of our yeah. buds. He, yeah. he, so he has this space and he's got all these people, none of them in construction or development, I don't think, but they're all talking about, you know, these, these multiplexes. Right. And they're all talking and like, I don't know. I think it's a great idea. I think it's like going to help, but like, I've never talked to anybody who figured out how to make it make financial sense. Like the ideas cool. Like, wow, now this can be four or five units, but like, if I they did figure it out, it. they're not sharing it with anybody. That's for sure. Nobody they're not, knows, they're, bro. They're not putting it on Twitter. Uh, it doesn't make say, any Look, sense. All you got to do is buy a five level back split and then da 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 da. They're not going to share that. I I'm sure it's. That. They're going to teach you how to do it, though. They'll sell you the course. But they'll sell you the course. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if these pencil out, but hold on. Zen, do you have a course? How? Zen, do you have a course? Is there? Do you have a course? No, yeah, I, I, I think I just refuse to do it. There's something yeah. about me being like, we, we do okay in our business. And 
I don't need to sell a course. Like we just offer education for free. And then if you yeah. want to work with us, you work with us. I don't want to sell a course. It makes me feel kind of sleazy. How, how does it work? It's okay. How does it work on your brokerage then? Is that, is, are you a team? Uh, how does that work with, uh, We're a give team yourself now. a little plug. We're a team now. So most people, if they want to work with us, they just book a call with me and tell me what do you want to do. And usually I allocate someone on my team who can help you with it. Right. And that's it. It's kind of like the old brokerage system, but just like a bigger team. I think you, you, you're with it too. With, um, we're a team, uh, but we're Macbook. inside a brokerage. So yeah, you're a brokerage, your whole brokerage is only consists of your team or you have yeah. other individual agents, right? That's what I thought, right? Yeah. 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 We, our brokerage is just our team and the brokerage team. was by accident. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So, um, and I know that you've got a lot of stuff going on. So what's, what's happening with your YouTube? So you've got some shorts that you've just, uh, started to put out there. I mean, uh, how are, how are the YouTube sort of videos going? Are you getting a lot of hate from the people, for, uh, the bears? Are they coming on your channel? Are you seeing a lot of increase in people? Like we notice a huge increase in the last two, three months. Maybe it's just the seasonality, but regardless, a lot more people are interested in real estate over the last three months or so a lot more views and a lot more uh, people out there. I noticed a big uptick in like call volume in like February and then okay. it's kind of like dwindled off in May. Um, I do track the views, but like you guys probably know, like with the views, it really comes down to how good your headline is, right? Like I try to put out um, a content, well, I think Thursday about amortization and how people just don't need to be afraid of it, which is just like useful, helpful information for people. But like it did very, very poorly because it wasn't a clickbait enough headline. But if I talk about like Bank of Canada or I put the word crash in it, like it doesn't provide much value. I'm just reiterating an article for somebody, but people love hearing that. So like, I wouldn't use kind of views as like a indicator of like kind Quality. of sentiment or sentiment. Yeah, exactly. I look at the number of calls that are people are calling in about something mm, and good. call volume has definitely like slowed down on our side. But like you said, I think it's just seasonal norms, right? People yeah. made, made plan and we're getting less showings now. We're getting less offers. Like that's all yeah, across the board. Like it's clear that April was like the peak of like showings and yeah. offers. And then May it was like starting to just dwindle down depending on area. Each area was a little bit different. If you watch our channel's views, it definitely goes with the sentiment of, of the market. Like when the market's rip roaring, we get a ton of views and as it cools down, so do we. You can see it. And if you, I'll bet you, if you plot our views over time against the market and, and its activity, market, yeah. I'll bet you they're like, what it feels like yeah. I'm oh, telling 100%. you, I can see it. Yeah. I see it. Yeah. hundred. I think I had like a really big boom in like one month where I got like a thousand subscribers. And I think yeah. I was like Whoa. peak 2021. I was like, where are all these people coming from? <laughs> you have right? good stuff. Like your content's educational. Sure. It's like straight to the point. Like I, I, you, you're definitely sharp and you definitely have, your your uh, your act together. What what um, ton of subs see? too? He's got like twelve thousand subs now. Nice. Thanks guys. I'll send you the check for that. Sure. No problem. Good. No no no. You do good. <laughs> people people who know you uh, um, know know this already. But anybody looking to just get more content, subscribe to to Prime Properties. To what about June seventh? We got a Bank of Canada announcement. What's what's happening, Zen? What do you think? I think low probability we're going to get something. I think everyone got spooked with the CPI print. But I think July hike is on the table again for sure. So yeah. June, it's uh, nothing. June, uh, I, th I think it's, I think it's still going to be the same. But they okay. may talk about bringing one back in July. Like what I'm watching the most for right now is the inflation print for June. But that may not come out until like after the July announcement, right? Because mm -hmm. in June 2022 is the highest CPI print at like 8.8%. And if we don't have a base effect, which is like a rollover next year kind of yeah, thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it comes down, oh man, are we in for trouble? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar yeah, to the like, market, how we compared now to May 2022 prices, right? Yeah. Like obviously February was going to be down 14%, but now we're starting to get real accurate numbers to figure out where the real estate market is and, and inflation is going to be the same thing. I think right? I saw for, yeah, the year over year TREV numbers were like down like 19%, sorry, 19,000 from last year. So it's like basically caught back up. Uh, total yeah, year yeah like total like yeah year to date yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so like i think things are going to look rosy in the future when you do year over year comparison sure. or when you do month over month comparison seasonal slowdowns and the big thing really just comes down to like are we going to get a bad inflation print in june or a good one and like the gdp gdp number came in really really strong too but that's like mm -hmm. a lagging effect too right where we had a lot of uh gdp like growth in q1 i think it's g q2 q3 could be pretty soft 
I think that Tiff should just go on YouTube and listen to what we're saying about the market before Always. he makes a decision. Because I feel like the numbers he's getting are all lagging where we're already like the market's slowing down. The prices are coming down. Don't worry, Tiff. It's okay. April was hot. We know, but things change in May. Don't worry. I don't think Tiff knows that. That's why I think there's a risk for the quarter point increase because it's like, I really do believe that he thinks that things are going to turn on a dime. He doesn't understand the seasonality of, of prices. And I know but I think, it's not everything. I think but... we're, we're focusing on the fact that we are in real estate and we being Torontonians think we're in the center of Toronto and Canada. Sorry, Canada. I don't think he looks at just Toronto real estate price because if you think yeah. about it, let's say 90,000 transactions a year, is he really going to move interest rates over 90,000 transactions a year? I don't think so. You got to look at how the oil is doing, how our currency is doing relative to the USD, what our trading looks like. There's so many bigger factors that I think us as real estate pundits only focus on the real estate component. There's so many other factors, mm -hmm. way too many. That's way beyond all our pay grades. Hundred, I was being facetious, but 100% oh, agree, see. obviously. <laughs> but I'm, I, I get it when we're when we're looking at how you know he's going to make decisions. But real estate's that one factor that is going to be part of like heavily weighted in the basket, right? The and so in April, I believe based on what I read was that one of the the contributors to the CPI increase was was housing right and obviously had to we were yeah, talking about that for months and obviously like, how fuel, does CPI fuel is another thing that's also been um uh, on the rise but that also came back down recently too I've noticed yeah, yeah. right do, so do you subscribe to um Ben Rabidou's uh his reports uh Daryl I know I, Ben I, I, but no yeah, you know Ben yeah. I see his stuff. I'll, I'll on Twitter, it, I like used it. to see his stuff on Twitter. Mm. Um, so he he had a sensitive chart. topic. <laughs> I see. Okay, sorry. Like he had Darryl's a chart. Not, Daryl's not allowed on Twitter anymore right now. He's I taking see. a break. Did he get banned? Yeah. He's taking a break. I see. Okay, he's taking a break. He's taking a uh, uh, forced break. Yeah. 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 But he was saying like of the four percent that was in uh, the CPI print, like 0.8 of that came from mortgage rates. So like you could drop CPI by not increasing the interest rates anymore. It's like cyclical. It makes no sense, mm. right? So like I can see that happening, right? But like when you have so much like uh, housing replacement costs and like everyone's interest rate had gone up, the CPI is obviously going to go up. Sure. Like the fact that how can you narrow down everyone's life to one number as a basket makes no sense. Everyone's CPI number is different. Like if mm. say, CK, you enjoy very fine Wagyu steaks, your CPI may be really high because beef has like doubled in price. But if you only eat chicken, chicken didn't go up that much. But the, the way they figure it out, stupid. Like, it, look, if you go that anywhere and you go, hey, hey, TK, you paying more for shit now? Yep. How much more? I don't know. 10, 20 percent. Thanks. Hey, Zen, you paying more for stuff? Like, you're not going to find anybody that says, you know what? Three, four percent. I'm getting good deals all over the place. It's way cheaper now everywhere. Like, everybody knows it goes up. But, you know, OK, so you said earlier, like, you know, we got all these pundits that are talking and we're all in, making up stuff. And I mean, it's true to a degree, but like we need to do this to figure things out. And 100 percent. They need help figuring it out because of all this stuff we're talking about. Like, look, we're, we don't live in this market where like there's somebody sitting there going like, OK, let's change the rates today. And OK, like, no, maybe we won't change the rates today or maybe we're going to tell them we're going to change the rates, but we won't change the rates. And then you have like all these other factors, right, that like there's all these things that happen that aren't just like par for the course. So it's like the market could be going a certain way and everything's good. And then they introduce a policy and everybody's got to figure out how to like deal with that now. And then things are moving along a little bit and then a war breaks out or a pandemic or a something like there's always something that we need to talk through to see what might or how it may affect, I guess, our pocketbooks at the end of the day. But like if, if we weren't doing this, would it be better? I personally think so. Like, would I be happier not knowing all I know and just hold on to my property and live life? A hundred percent. Happiest people I meet. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, happiest there's, there's, people I meet. Why are we all doing this? Of, well, TK and I are in the industry and people are going to ask us the question. So we have to know what's going on. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm educational forward. So I need to be able to educate my clients about this. But would I be happier not knowing about this? Or would I be happier not? Like, here's a good example. I think. I was on Twitter for like a tiny bit, but it was so negative, even though there's good information coming from it. And I was like, I'm out because I just need my life to be good. I don't need to be seeing all this negativity. I'm like, I would be mm -hmm. happier not knowing mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. So 
for me in real estate, would I be happier not knowing all of this stuff and holding what I have right now and just moving off my life? A hundred percent. But do we need to overanalyze everything and just try to you know, kind of get an answer from each and every way and each different person's perspective analyzing it? No, we don't have to because you can make numbers say whatever they want, honestly. Like I try to have a very yes. approach on things, but like as a very good sales guy, I can tell you the cup is half full or half empty. It's totally up to me and what you want to believe, right? Yeah. So I think everyone's just arguing too much over like small things. But if you just take at big fundamental things, Occam's razor, which is like a medical term for it, like the most simplest solution of everything is too much demand for too little stuff. That's it when it comes down to real estate. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. It just boils down to that. So there and you have it. Know. That's the last Canadian real estate show of all time. We just ended we with a bank. We don't need to do this anymore. anymore. That's it, guys. We don't have enough places. Too many people. I feel people. free. I feel We're freer starting already. We're talking about what are you going to do with all your spare time? <laughs> I'm already trying to figure it out without Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> The new the new channel will will be focused on Elon Musk saving the world That's right. from a mutant alien race with robots. Now he's See on all my, next week. He's on my hit list now. <laughs> Fucking banned me. That's Don't not. Worry, I'll talk to him. All right, he owns, he owns Twitter, speech right, my right. ass. Anyways, thank you, Zen. Zen, amazing, amazing. Um, again, shameless plug. Where can people find you? Just uh, find me on Prime Properties TO on YouTube, or if you want to book a call, it's www.chatwithzen.com. That is it. Awesome. And if you're still listening to the show, Thank I don't know you. why you don't have anything else better to do today, but don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next week. And if you thought that this was way too long, check out our real estate show, Canadian Real Estate Show Clips channel for all the good stuff in bite-sized portions. Thanks.